our feature presentation. Our God has been so wild lately. He doesn't seem to listen, he doesn't obey my commands, and we can't even bribe him with trees. He's gotten so out of hand, he may even have to be put down. God is not the problem here. The problem is the people who want to be the leader of the pack. We reintroduce God. We retrain people. You're listening to The God Whisperers. Attention. The following segment contains a home schooler alert. Attention. The following segment contains a home schooler alert. Hi, my name is Rudy. Yes, that Rudy. The one swirler called the fourth largest Lutheran body in North America. Yeah, that's me. What did you think he meant by fourth largest Lutheran body? I digress. I had the opportunity some would say misfortune, of being an in-studio observer and guest for a couple of episodes of The God Whispers over the Christmas holidays in December of 2012. Now you're probably wondering how I got the gig. Well, glad you asked. It all started when the family decided we needed a Christmas holiday this year. But that part of the story can wait. Now you're probably wondering how I got to know Swirla. Even if you're not, I'm going to tell you anyway. Years ago, Pastor Michael Keith, you don't know him and you don't want to know him, contacted Pastor Swirla to be the guest speaker at the first annual Lutheran Church Canada Preachers Retreat. I was taking some time to get to know Pastor Swirla, making the inevitable but necessary small talk that introverts like Swirla relish in. The conversation was going well and was as deep as any Seinfeld episode talking about nothing at all and everything at the same time. That very first conversation with Pastor Swirla was rudely interrupted by Pastor Michael Keith, who has known me for many years, sadly on his part. He asked the following question, Have you defiled Swirla yet? We both looked at him with shocked looks on our faces. I knew it was going to be a good conference when Swirla replied, without missing a beat, Not yet but the day is still young. It all started in the gazebo. This gazebo. That's where the evening sessions of the retreat occurred. Fine scotch is consumed, and the problems of the church and the world are solved. Fortunately, enough libations are consumed that we all forget the solutions by the morning, and so like the circle of life, the process begins again the next night. I digress. Well, enough about me. Let's get on with the show. The God Whispers, disturbing and compelling. Remember, you'll wish you never had a look behind the curtain. After getting to know Craig a bit on my trip and trying to sum up his life, and after doing some superficial research, the only word I could think of that adequately sums up his life is confusion. It all started at a young age with, yes, you guessed it, Confusion. Ethnic confusion. He began life as a tam o young boy, reveling in his Scottish roots. With a name like D'Onofrio, how could it be otherwise? Craig's family was a loving family. Here's a shot of his sister telling the world of her love for the D'Onofrio clan. Confusion in Craig's life wasn't so much a river that ran through it, but much more like a sewer that sludged its way through the drain pipes of his life. He tried many and various personas in his journey through grade school. He longed for a time of stability. Sadly, he would not find it in his pursuit to be less confused. Just as he could not completely outgrow his confusion, so also his hair could not outgrow that state. He also felt the need to do something for God with his life. Unfortunately, this was not it either. Instead, he pursued the music of the devil. CCF. Modern Mission was a mid-80s new wave quartet featuring one member with a real name and three others who remained somewhat anonymous. 
The album sports hard-hitting music with direct and aggressive Christian lyrics. Brian Quincy Newcomb of CCM wrote that the band may only do one thing, but they do it quite well. Songs like Stick to Your Guns and Time to Fight exemplify their militant take on theology. The lead vocals of Iggy carry a new passion and anguish not unlike U2's Bono or Lloyd Boldermo of Prodigal. Musically, this is a keyboard-driven 80s style band, but they sure sound trendy. I think Gordon Driver, their producer, has pointed them in the right directions. After his experimental years, Craig D'Onofrio took his rightful place in the annals of a friendly secret society that took advantage of his Sicilian roots. Here's a shot of Craig making two offers to some clients that they can't refuse. After wandering through several positions within Cosa Nostra Incorporated, he was given one final evaluation as an associate. Some drink from the fountain of knowledge, he only gargled. But enough about D'Onofrio. This is the true story of a dynamic duo. It is a partnership that is oxymoronic in nature, with special emphasis on the moronic. In fact, this relationship is best described in terms of other paradoxes. Military intelligence, jumbo shrimp, walking together as a synod, and the words that best describe the Swirlo denofrio relationship, disturbing and compelling. The other partner of that duo is William Swirla. Let's explore the beginning, the genesis, as it were, of the other half of that most disturbing and compelling of teams, the God Whisperers. Not saying he's old or anything, but on a recent ancient prehistoric research assignment, two undergrad students from Stanford recently discovered paintings done by cavemen. What they found has forever changed the perception of the dating of Lutheranism. It has moved it further back in time than ever before. William Swirla's baby picture was painted on the wall of his caveman home by his parents, thereby proving that Swirla is indeed a relic of the Bronze Age of Lutheranism. He denies this to this day, but as you can see, pictures don't lie. Attention! The following segment contains a home schooler alert. Swirla has always had an adverse reaction to authority. This was proven when he was forced to sit for his grade one school picture. And as you can see, he now has a fully mature and more nuanced way of dealing with people who challenge him today. Bill has not always been the eye candy he is today. In fact, he was much cuter as a child, but his parents loved him anyway. Growing up, he always had an interest in experimentation of all kinds. Indoor experimentation was not the only kind of interest Bill had. He also loved the outdoors and spent time in the Boy Scouts movement. By the way, that's the young William on the far right. One day, Serendipity stepped in and arranged a chance meeting. Swirla and D'Onofrio actually met when they were both very young. They ended up joining the same Boy Scout troop as kids, and as part of the work they had to do to earn a very special, but sadly no longer offered, badge. The Trekkies badge. This Trekkies badge was offered for those who can show definitively a love for all things Star Trekish. Extra merit gold stars were earned by both of them for their intensive research into William Shatner. Their intense interest in Shatner lives to this day. This is most certainly true, and further evidence that the God Whisperers are most certainly disturbing and compelling. Swirla grew up and decided that becoming a member of the Liberation Army for the Freeing of Immigrant Farm Workers of California Berkeley Branch would be a good thing. Disturbing and compelling as that was, he went on to do something even more disturbing and more compelling. A chemist. As you will see, his experiments with various chemicals left a lasting impression on him. After his chemically disturbing and compelling time, he, like Craig D'Onofrio, entered a dazed and confused time in his life. He, like D'Onofrio, sought to find himself. It was a journey of some length, but not much breadth. He dabbled in various personas, 
too many to list, but fortunately, like a trail of rabbit droppings, there is a photographic record of that journey. And just like following rabbit droppings, one can eventually find the way back. Spending too much time reading the bottles of both non-prescription and prescription chemicals, he eventually needed corrective lenses. This is the epitome of disturbing and compelling. What makes the show what it is, is, well, another story. It's a story that really deserves to be told, even though you don't want to hear it. It deserves an inside look at what it takes to do theology without a net. How was the show made? What kind of preparation time goes into it? What was learned from an insider's view?